Hi, welcome to Artsy. I'm your host, Bill Horn. And my guest today is Mike Cagno. Mike is a teacher and artist, and he's also the executive director of the Noise Museum of Art of Stockton University. Welcome to Artsy, Mike. Bill, thank you so much for having me. So obviously there's been a lot going on and the noise itself has been kind of shut down for quite a while, but you've been really busy. Give us some idea of what you're doing now. I don't necessarily think that we're, we're, we're shut down. We're, we're really like obviously closed like everybody else, um, but we're utilizing that time to go from a reaction standpoint to the current environment into a more proactive uh, space. And what I mean by that, Bill, is providing opportunities, new opportunities, to continue our engagement with our constituents through uses of technology, as well as being making sure that we are relevant to the community that we serve. So a lot of my time during, uh, during the day is taken up uh, within that space. In addition to that, I, I sit on a couple boards uh, regional boards with museums, and I'm very active in the economic development side with Atlantic City and in Hamilton, and really just providing, like many other of our colleagues out there, Bill, uh, providing the resources, um, or at least the, the places where we can get resources, um, both on a financial front, a health front, uh, emotional support front, um, to, our, to our friends out there in South Jersey. You touched on something that I think all artists and organizations are wondering about is getting support. Uh, I talk to a lot of artists on a regular basis and it's kind of confusing out there right now. What are some of the things you may have found? I know you sent me a few links and I will share those uh, on the YouTube page, but give me a little insight into some of the things that you found that could help artists and arts organizations. You're right. It's, it's almost a little bit of a, of a, of a minefield. And the reason being that it's new to everybody. Uh, everybody's still in a reactionary uh, footing. Um, but I really do encourage whether it's artists or art organizations, um, and not just cultural organizations, but you know retailers in, in any profession, of uh, being proactive and, and getting out there. In our industry, for an example, we look to obviously the New Jersey State Council of the Arts. We look to the resource page of South Jersey Cultural Alliance. New Jersey Art Pride, uh, but on a national level, I think it's important to look outside our geographical range for um, not only ideas, but for perhaps financial assistance um, and other resources. For example, American, uh, Museum, uh, American Alliance for Museums, Mid-Atlantic Association Museums, American for the Arts, those are other place in other places provide the pages on their websites of the COVID-19 um, response. And I know for us at the noise on a, on a recent staff meeting, uh, we're gonna provide a landing page on our website and we're not gonna duplicate the wheel. There's a lot of great information out there. We're just gonna help to provide a platform to share these resources as a one-stop type of thing. So you said you were gonna provide a landing page on your website. Uh, when do you expect that to happen or has it already happened? My team and I had a meeting uh, with you this morning uh, discussing that and we're hoping by middle of next week. Um, we are, we have, we've identified those pages that we wanna highlight first um, as well as uh, moving forward. In addition, especially for artists because it is a very challenging time to be an artist prior to this in, in, in South Jersey. Um, so we're gonna be also looking at other resources. When you look at what New Jersey is doing and with unemployment, they are now opening up and including the arts and entertainment. Um, they're looking at key things, making sure that you have three years of tax records and those kind of items for the application. But the paperwork that's involved with this, I am seeing is much more simplified and much more open-ended to those individuals for application. Okay, you also mentioned embracing new technology, and I know we talked about that the other day. How are you and Stockton embracing new technology? I have a great team. Um, my my uh, experience with technology is that of a four-year-old. So 
uh, it's really providing an opportunity to have uh, virtual exhibits. But I offer a, a, a cautionary tale as we go through this ourselves. We don't have the capacity or resources to take and develop a perfect um, walkthrough of the gallery. I mean, right now I'm talking to you, I'm sitting at the Arts Garage in our photography exhibit. Um, I can't compete against MoMA and the Louvre and the Met, all right? But knowing that, there are still opportunities um, that are out there uh, to provide a simplified, uh, uh, simplified engagement of showing off our current exhibits as well as those we are going to postpone. Um, we are experimenting with, uh, with the Google Street View as well. Um, and it's gonna provide uh, Google 360 maps on, and make it interactive on our website. So one of the challenges, and, and Bill, you and I talked about this the other day, was everybody's using Facebook Live, and we will too. Uh, but I will tell you that, that when I go on Facebook and, and social media, my attention span has not changed. It's still that of three seconds. So, you know, scrolling through, I see a lot of Facebook lives and I can tell you maybe within an hour, I click on two and no longer than 10 or 15 seconds. So how do you make, how do you make content that's relevant and simple and engaging? And we're, we're, we're finding our way through this. So it's a new uh, environment for us, but it's also a wonderful opportunity uh, for us to learn from. So what are you telling your artist? So what we're telling our artists is, is uh, a couple things. Um, obviously, I don't have resources to start writing checks, you know, like, you know, the federal government and stuff like that. Um, one of the most important things for us as a, as a museum is to collect. And we are going through, we're living history right now. So we're reaching out to artists who are starting to react or respond through their creativity so that when all of this eventually starts to dissipate, we can gather those artifacts, gather those stories, gather that data, and we can then create, whether it be a virtual exhibit or a tangible exhibit, to tell the story of COVID-19 and using the arts as the main mechanism uh, for that. Uh, obviously, when you go on any social media platform, you are seeing how much the arts in music, poetry, literature, painting, sculpture is really helping us as a society to get through emotionally, emotionally and um, mentally uh, as well as, as, as physically. So um, the arts are ever more important so today than there ever have been. I know there's more than one geographic location for the noise, and I'm assuming they're all going to be opening back up, but give us a little rundown of exactly where the noise is today. We're a little bit everywhere. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, the Arts Garage in Atlantic City, uh, we have our gallery spaces in Hamilton at Kramer Hall, involved with the uh, art district there. Uh, our friends over at Atlantic Care and Shore Medical with uh, showcasing local talent. We still have a gallery space, a dedicated gallery space with our friends at the Seaview Resort, and also with the new campus in Atlantic City and Stockton Satellite up in, in Manahawkin. In all, Bill, we do about a 35 exhibits a year with local artists all the way up to international, uh, a variety of mediums and, and, and uh, themes and subject matters, a lot of programming, anywhere from 150 to 180 programs a year for youth, uh, adults, um, everything from uh, film to uh, poetry recitings to uh, special events. Uh, and, and that's one of the exciting things about doing what it is I do is that uh, we're really engaged with our different diverse communities. Um, and I learn a lot in working with the community of Atlantic City and, and our, our folks in Hamilton. Uh, and what I really embrace about my job on a daily basis is that every day is different. I can be working on spreadsheets, I can be talking to a, to a senator, I could be installing an exhibit. Uh, I'm very fortunate that I don't consider myself having the job. I, this is what I do, and this is what I've been doing for a long time. And we're going to wrap it up on that note, Mike. I want to thank you for being here. This has been Artsy. Thanks for watching.